Welcome to Southeast Ohio Solar Haven once again. How are we doing today? Well, today was a nice sunny day before we get to experience some more cold weather and possibly snow Friday night or Friday evening. Who knows? But I come out here this afternoon because I wanted to show you all something. And I've been asked several times by some Facebook users and friends and stuff. How did I do my combiner panel? Well, right here's my combiner panel. This is what it actually looks like inside the combiner panel. I use midnight breaker switches. As you can see, they're rated for 20 amp apiece, 150 volt DC. And every two you see there controls a certain set of panels uh like uh i i, I don't know right off the bat because i really can't remember but like two of these will handle six of the large panels i have and then these two sets here will handle a set of the see now i just turned them off a set of the smaller panels back here in the rack you see here and then you can see my larger panel so like two sets of or two breaker switches handle one set of those because the way I got them wired and the same goes for here on these particular and I plan on actually Yes, I'm going to say it, expanding on the solar panels. And this box technically isn't big enough for what I need for my combiner panel. You know, everything goes down, you know, comes into here. And if we can get down there, uh, it's two inch going under the ground to the back of the house. Well, we can't see the back of the house. Do I'm having a dub moment but I have this gigantic and I mean gigantic electrical panel box that I had found at a local flea market about three three and a half years ago and I've kind of saved it back looky here Yes, it's that big. Uh, it, I, I, it's got its own door. It's a Wigman, or if that's how they say it. And this thing here is probably, I don't know what the measurements on it. It never did say, but if I remember right, it's like two feet wide by three feet tall compared to a 12 inch box I mean you can kind of go sideways it's, it's just huge and I mean that box don't look so crowded but I'm going to be adding more panels and I thought well you know maybe it wouldn't be too bad of an idea to have a bigger box and finally put this box to use so uh, here in the future we're going to be rebuilding this, putting it in here. And, uh, you know, that's how I did my uh, solar combiner panel. I, I mean, yeah, everybody wants the midnight solar uh, combiner boxes, you know. Yeah, you can go out, but, you know, I've got three separate grounds in here I have to deal with, as you see. Because each one of these are separate. It's the way I did it. I separated them out. I didn't combine them because some panels are higher voltage. Like my big six. They're way higher voltage than these. I want to say that uh, we can find one that's not... Well, I can turn the camera. You can see the voltage ratings on there. Oh, I can't even see it. But you can see the voltage rating. And 
I want to say that these down here are rated at 45 volts. As you can see, yeah, 45 one, I believe. So, I mean, when you got that higher voltage, and I believe these were 38, maybe I can't remember the number because I didn't see it. So, and you, know, you kind of don't want to put the higher voltage panels with a lower voltage panel because you can lose power and all that happy stuff. So that's the reason why I got so many separate charge controllers, by the way. But yeah, this is a, I mean, anybody wants to copy that, you can see what I've done there, separate ground bars for each array. Got my own DIN rail. Yeah, I put this together fairly cheap. In fact, I think the DIN rail, when I bought it, you can buy a 24 inches of DIN rail at Arizona Sun and Wind for like $5 and something. And then all you have to do is you can buy these plates too at uh, Arizona Sun and Wind. I believe I bought two of them and I just cut them in half because you can buy them for a whole thing and then you can cut them in half and, you, and it comes with all this hardware. And uh, I just bought, uh, you know, these regular things like the, for the ground you know, I bought that at uh, Lowe's and I bought this box at Lowe's the, the plastic whatever I think they call it a Syntec or or a Syntex yeah you can barely see it says or Cantex I bought that that's been my combiner box for many years it still does the job but I don't have room for more breakers because of the you know the spread apart you got to keep these fairly apart you don't want them close together so i mean i probably could put another piece of denro in there and spread you know make four in there but box has been beat up and this one's been chipped on the corner and yeah it's all kinds of stuff going on plus i'm gonna have to pull another wire through here so that's going to be fun. But yeah, I'm... You yeah, know, learn right there, guys. This is how you can build your own DIY solar combiner box. And I'm sitting there trying to give the best view I can of it for you all. That way you can see what's going on inside of here. Always remember your positive ends will always come at the bottom. Your input, your output will be at the top. That's another thing they don't tell you about these uh, breaker switches that are DC for midnight solar. There is a positive and a negative. And if you look right down there on the very bottom, plus for positive, that is your input side. The top side will always be your output side on those DC breakers every single time. So yeah, that's how I've been doing it. And it works out like a champ. Um, never had an, I've never had an issue with these midnight breakers. Uh, DC rated 150 volt, well worth it. Uh, but yeah, that's the new plan. We'll put this box right here. That'll be fun to do. Um, I can bring everything in where I want it to. And plus, you know, I'll have room for future upgrades. I mean, or, you know, maybe I can put everything at the top part and maybe even down here at the bottom because this box is so thick. It's like 10 inches deep. Um, you know, I could take and maybe put a small power inverter system in that and a battery to have something, you know, emergency lighting back here for some un weird reason. But, uh, I know I keep pointing this back to here, but, you know, I want people to get a good look on this that, you know, 
maybe this idea will help you save money in building your own uh, combiner box. I've seen so many people design different ones and do it different ways, but this is the way I came up with, and it was so much easier than some of the, you know, taking an electrical box and uh, it's taking this apart and that. This was just so much simpler to deal with and waterproof at the same time so and it works out great so but anyway uh, i just wanted you all to see how i did that this afternoon well i didn't do it today but how i done a combiner box for my system and i want you all to have a good day and i want you to remember we're going to have sunshine in the near future and warmer weather eventually and eventually we're going to get back to business that way our economy will get back to going again will be no more virus stuff going on hopefully and we can all get back to our normal business but stand back you can see the difference it's just crazy large <laughs> uh but yeah if you uh you know if you like to you know hit that subscribe button down there it only hurt once i swear it only hurt once click that like button gotta click the like button and hit that bell notification and like i always say yeah it only hurt once once again see down there it only hurt once but you can see the size comparison on the boxes Thanks, guys, for watching. Like I always say, thanks, man. I'm out of here, guys. Have a good one.